Welcome back. This video talks about the topic of charity. It's an important topic to talk about because um, Freemasonry of today places a lot of emphasis on charity and especially from a monetary context. And a lot of good comes from that. Um, they raise enormous amounts of money for charity and um, a lot of that money, hopefully all of that money, and I say hopefully because I'm not involved in the treasury, but I would have thought all of that money ought to go and should go and probably does go to the designated charities. And you can see certain organisations benefiting from Masonic charity in a monetary sense, which is great. Uh, it does a number of things. Firstly, it makes those who give the charity in terms of money, it makes them feel um, like they've done a good deed. So it's for um, self, it's self balming, I would say. Um, it puts masonry in a good light in the public. Because when anyone gives monetary charity, um, there's a certain kudos that comes with that. There's a certain um, respect and honour that comes with giving money to organisations and people in need. And it, there's a third thing it does, is uh, attempt to dispel the nefarious myths about Freemasonry that have been propagated by conspiracy theorists uh, f for the last at least 100, 150 years. And obviously much more recent now with the advent of social media. Um, so, monetary charity has a lot uh, about it and uh, there's a lot can be said for it. But I don't think that when charity was first mentioned in our Masonic ritual, then it necessarily was, the, as in the deeper meaning, I don't think it's necessarily encouraging the Freemason to give monetary charity in order to be practicing as a Mason. Now, I, I appreciate that that's what the words might uh, allude to, might get at, and even might have its literal interpretation but like everything in freemasonry especially if you're looking at um the ritual in a an esoteric way there's a literal meaning and there's something which is deeper which we're going to look into and i often uh, recommend any words that stand out in Freemasonry, especially those that are just taken for granted um, as, as for its intended meaning. Look into its etymology, look into where the word comes from, because a lot of wealth can be gained from that practice. So without further ado, I'm going to read the uh, charge in the northeast corner. It's an address to the candidates in the first degree ceremony who stands at the northeast corner of the lodge room and i will talk about what my take on the northeast corner actually is uh some other time but for now this is focusing on charity so if i read out the charge uh, i hope you're all sitting comfortably i'm going to read from my very very old and it's falling apart my very old lecture book, and it needs to be rebound. This is from um, 18, gosh, 1895. So, uh, this is given to me, it's a funny story, but I'll, <laughs> uh, this was handed to me by someone that I knew from a lodge that I was in, who found it in a charity shop with my great-grandfather's name on. So there are no coincidences. He, I think he just purchased this for, I think, a pound or something. 
and he gave it to me and I've cherished it ever since. I've cherished it too much because it's falling apart, but anyway. So the charge is, is as follows. It is customary at the erection of all stately and superb edifices to lay the first or foundation stone at the northeast corner of the building. You, being newly admitted into masonry, are placed at the northeast part of the lodge, figuratively to represent that stone. And from the foundation laid this evening, may you raise a superstructure perfect in its parts and honourable to the builder. You now stand to all external appearance a just and upright mason. And I give it you in strong terms of recommendation ever to continue and act as such. Indeed, I shall immediately proceed to put your principles in some measure to the test by calling upon you to exercise that virtue which may be justly sorry which may justly be denominated the distinguishing characteristic of a freemason's heart i mean charity i need not here dilate on its excellences no doubt it has often been felt and practiced by you suffice it to say it has the approbation of heaven and earth and like its sister, Mercy, blesses him who gives as well as him who receives. In a society so widely extended as Freemasonry, the branches of which are spread over the four quarters of the globe, it cannot be denied that we have many members of rank and opulence. Neither can it be concealed that among the thousands who range under its banners, banners there are some who perhaps from circumstances of unavoidable calamity and misfortune are reduced to the lowest ebb of poverty and distress on their behalf it is our usual custom to awaken the feelings of every new made brother by such a claim on his charity as his circumstances in life may fairly warrant whatever Therefore, you feel disposed to give, you will deposit with the junior deacon, it will be thankfully received and faithfully applied. Now, at this point in the ceremony, um, to all those who can recall the first degree ceremony, and just for a recap, the junior deacon puts his hand out, or has a tray for charity, puts his tray out implying that the candidate is to give something now the candidate before entering into the lodge room has been divested of all metals all material belongings or possessions so naturally says no to the question do you have anything to give in the name of charity or words to that effect now so when he says, I was divested of all metal and hoodwinked, etc., um, it refers to this moment. It was divested of everything valuable previously to entering the lodge. And then the, there's a response given after that by the junior deacon that says, um, had you not been divested of everything valuable previously to enter into the lodge, would you have given freely? And the answer is yes. So at this stage in the Mason's journey, he believes that in order to give charity, it has to be something physical, something of monetary value, or well, money itself. But it's only later on in the Masonic journey do you start questioning the meaning of all of these ceremonies and what the meaning of a lodge is. Now, if you're looking at masonry esoterically, you will see that, or you at least will, in my view, you will reach the conclusion naturally that the lodge itself represents something internal. So if it represents an internal aspect of oneself, then because the ceremony is happening inside the lodge, then this is a process that's happening inside you. So it can't be talking about money, can it? 
on it. I appreciate it alludes to money. Because I think it's written in a way in which it can be interpreted in a literal sense and in a sort of material sense. And I think that's deliberate. I think it's deliberately doing that, just as the Bible has been written in a deliberately obvious literal way. But if you look deeper into it, there are hidden meanings, the same as this. So the deeper meaning about this ritual is because it's happening inside the lodge, it can't be referring to something that you are to physically give. It's funny because this question wasn't asked of the master mason once he became, once he was raised. Because a true master mason, if he was asked this question about charity, would you, do you have anything to give in the name of charity? They wouldn't hesitate to give of themselves, to just give of the heart. Let's look over the words here. Now, there's something interesting when it says, um, I indeed, I shall immediately proceed to put your principles in some measure to the test by calling upon you to exercise that virtue, which may justly be denominated the distinguishing characteristics of a Freemason's heart. Now, of course, when you give charity, in a monetary sense, it, it's important that you give from the heart, and not with any other motive, because it's it's not genuine. You may as well not give. Or I, I'm gonna I'll loosen that point. Obviously, giving money to help someone is good either way, but from a real meaning of charity, it it's meant to be for the one, not only for the re receiver, but for the one who gives. It nourishes the soul. I mean, it just says here, uh, I need not here dilate on its excellences. No doubt it has often been felt and practised by you. Suffice it to say, it is the approbation of heaven and earth, and like its sister mercy, blesses him who gives as well as him who receives. So it's got a big benefit for the one who gives, and it's got the approbation of heaven and earth. In In other words heaven because it's the approbation of heaven and earth above and below it's good for all of the whole of one's reality to to give freely and to give from the heart without any motive without any notion of wanting to receive just to give but because as i say i keep going back to this point because from an esoteric perspective to look into the meaning of the ritual, if you're looking at what is going on internally within oneself, then this has a meaning beyond giving of something to someone else. If you look at the structure of oneself internally, you can say it's made up of a myriad of different aspects. And you know that to be true. And I, you know, you can put this to the test. You know that there are many different aspects of let's just say let's just say the personality. So this is more of a a lower sense of self, but the personality has many different layers to it psychologically. Well, if that's got many layers to it, then you can look deeper and you can look deeper and deeper, and there are layers beneath that. So you know that already something internally has many different aspects to it which you can relate to there being many different officers within the lodge, many different, um, uh, there's furniture, there's different objects, symbols, there's all sorts of um, references to different aspects of you. It mentions the four um, quarters of the globe. Well, okay, you can see it literally about the four quarters of the, the actual globe of the earth. Um, but you can also look at it the four quarters of oneself. Because when it mentions quarter, it's talking about square. And remember that a square is an angle of 90 degrees or the fourth part of a circle. If you look at a fourth part of a circle, you just draw a cross. 
and fourth part is a square. The, the ancient um, operative masons, they the squares they used were simply an angle of 90 degrees and they put that against the side of a stone to measure the uprightness and how level it would be. So th this is the interesting thing. If you look into the different aspects of this ritual, um, spread over the four quarters of the globe for the entirety of you, you the entirety of your constitution it has a benefit of now um, because the junior the junior deacon is putting it says it's putting one to the test so you're being tested in that moment as to how you regard charity and I mentioned just before a master mason would not hesitate to give of oneself. He wouldn't consider charity to just simply mean money. Now, when I say master mason, I'm not talking about the average master mason in masonry. I mean, they're worth to a penny. I'm talking about a real spiritual master mason, which I've hardly met any. One who's reached that spiritual level of master mason. And... If we're not talking about giving of oneself to another person, let's talk about internally. Because internally, there can be things happening that are in a state of darkness, state of confusion. Let's say they're not resonating to, in the same frequency as the rest of one's constitution. And we all, we've all experienced this. Let's just say there's something niggling or we're out of sorts with something. Or we've had a bad turn. There's been a, an issue with someone, and it's it's not resonating on a level which would be harmonious. Well, um, that can be likened to being reduced to the lowest ebb of poverty and distress. So, if you're aware of anything happening internally in a state of greatest poverty and distress in that kind of sense, then because you are aware of that, you are viewing that from a much higher place. So you can actually give charity to those aspects of oneself which need to be brought in line, to be brought in harmony with the rest of the organism. Now charity, you could say, could be compassion, um, you could liken it to love. There's uh, the etymology of the word. It's interesting when you look into etymology, it means dear in old Latin. And a Greek translation of the word charity is agap or agape, depending on how you pronounce it, or agape. Um, that's more about um, charity in the sense of brotherly love to distinguish it from uh, amorous love. But either way, it's talking about um, something that is to be in line with the rest of the entire organism, the entire whole. So in my view, that's what charity is getting at. It's If you're talking about it in a material sense, it's you must give from the heart. You must give from there. To give charity for the sake of being recognised by Masonic authorities for doing good, so you can get your... Um, next Masonic penny, and you can get your medals and you can get your honours and ranks you can scrap all that from a spiritual perspective it's got no worth whatsoever all of that in my view besides the potential benefit it might have to a recipient where you would certainly get some benefit for that it has no value whatsoever if you're not giving truly and genu genuinely if you're giving disingenuously just for the sake of receiving something material, you can forget it. It's not going to have any benefit on your inner constitution. Now, I see that all the time. You see so many uh, Freemasons take on the position of um, charity steward. Go figure. <laughs> many people who take on charity steward, they do it for three or four years. They get recognised and they possibly become secretary or 
treasure or something like that in, in another lodge or after they've got their Masonic honours. As I say, that's for me, it's not real masonry. Real masonry is to apply these principles truly from within. So this is the test for the for the for the uh, entered apprentice. In that stage of his journey, he sees giving in terms of something physical, something uh, of possessions. In the third degree, you're to lose all that. You can still give. In fact, that's when you truly give. So, in a nutshell, that's my interpretation of charity. My the real interpretation, in my view, of charity from a Masonic perspective. Um, I hope you've uh, in, found this stimulating and uh, enjoyed the discussion um, and enjoyed the interpretation. If you've enjoyed what you've seen, uh, please like the video. Um, and if you haven't done, please subscribe above and ding the bell for any alerts for any new videos. Okay, thanks for watching.